All right, we are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Tuesday. With us this morning is Beverly Watts. She's the Executive Director of the Tennessee Humans right, Human Rights Commission. Good to have you on, ma'am. I appreciate, appreciate it. It's, uh, it's interesting to hear about the work you guys do there, which I think is very important. We have another call for you that waited through the break. We'll go to uh, Beth. Beth, good morning. Hi, Beth. Hi, good morning, um, all. Um, as the last gentleman was speaking about um, how to respond to to the needs of, of transgender people, et cetera, in the bathroom, for, I think that's what he said anyways. But my question is, or concern would be, um, the safety issue because, for example, say take a man who's now identifying as a woman, even though he still, he's identifying as a woman, he's still a man physically, and he's much stronger than a woman, so, that could present a danger for a woman in the women's bathroom if that person were to get violent for some reason, you know, for people. Yeah, I don't want to get, and I understand that's for another show we can get into that, just uh, that issue sometimes. Here's my point to that ma'am, though. If there's a guy that wants to come after you, whether he's transgender or not, he's going to come into that bathroom. So I, I, f I find that to be an argument that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But that's a separate issue, and that's mm -hmm. moving forward uh, as that law evolves. Um, but, yeah, one other thing, though, that um, I think uh, Paul was bringing up earlier with regard to, um, I guess, you know, seniors and them keeping their job. That line, I'm still trying to get a handle on, as he said, there's something to be said for loyalty in someone who's been there. That's a different thing. But businesses have a right to make a living and, and have employees that can do the job accurately. If you start aging and you're not able to do the job the way you once did, it'd be nice maybe if the business could transition you into another maybe office that does something different, but is it incumbent on them just, you know, to keep you on even if you've aged to the point where you can no longer perform the way they need you to or the way you once did? Businesses have to have a bona fide occupational qualification to make decisions like that. In other words, they have to say, you absolutely cannot do it, and they have to then justify the reasons and they have to document it because that's mm -hmm. what we're going to look for. Generally, what we find out is that sometimes though they have not done the BFOQ, they ha so those have been pretty simple. Uh, okay. Now, if we, as we look at complaints, what we know is the largest number of complaints we get today are about retaliation. That is, I decide to file a complaint. Maybe that complaint does or does not have merit based on the investigation. Mm -hmm. But then you turn around and you, you take action against me, that's called retaliation. So that's the largest number of complaints, and that's illegal on its face. You cannot take action against me because I pursue a right under the law to file a case against you right. as an employer, a housing provider, <coughs> or a provider of public accommodation. You cannot do that. So that's the largest number of complaints that we get at the Tennessee Human Rights Commission that the EEOC is seeing. When we break it down based on issues, we find that disability, is one of the largest issues, followed by race, and mm. sometimes they, they are one and two, depending on what's going In on. In terms of the types of complaints. T types of complaints. Okay. The disability tends to be the highest level mm. of complaints we receive. Is it a, a basically access? What kind of complaints usually for disability? Disability it? says that they didn't hire me because I'm disabled. I, oh. I come in a wheelchair and they didn't hire me. Oh, Under oh, Tennessee see. law, it has to be that. Or they, okay. or they fail to provide an accommodation for me to mm -hmm. do it, meaning I have limited sight. Mm -hmm. And if you give me a, a computer that adjust on its own mm -hmm. to, to large type, I can do whatever, whatever. I need to do. Yeah, easily or, if I, or if I am not cited, that there are certain prompts and other things that help me move around in office space so I don't bump into things. Sure. Or you allow me to bring in my service animal mm -hmm. to do that, so, to, to be with me. Uh, and so those are the I things see. we see there. The same thing is true in housing. We see the same issues in housing where people are denied housing for a variety of reasons. And that means that, oh, we're not, we're not going to let you in housing because, and this is an interesting one, because of your family. You've got three teenagers, and we don't allow teenagers here. That's against the law. That's called familial status discrimination under the law. Hmm. And so, or we, or if they're large complexes, they'll say, we'll let you in here, but you've got to, you, you can, the only building you can live in is building A, because that's where all the teenagers, families with teenagers live, or the families with children live. Mm -hmm. That's illegal under the law. You cannot segregate families with children, you have to give them law, you have to give them access to any apartment. You know, there are some like, adult retirement communities that's those are, different. Those where are it's different. 55 and, under, and older and no kids, and I can see why they want that. I'm and, sorry. And those are covered but, under, 
under HUD's law, and okay, those are allowed as an exemption. Oh, those okay. are allowed as an exemption. Interesting. Florida huh? has probably the largest number of those kind of facilities, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the moment you let children in, mm -hmm. for any reason, you become subject to laws in yeah. Florida, generally. So it's sort of an interesting dilemma because then you said you no longer want the exemption because. You, the grandparents raising kids kind of issue in Florida was one of the first states to see that and mm -hmm. view that. So there's a lot of law in Florida around what is allowable. But under the federal law, those are exempt properties. Now, you were telling me you have on staff 28? 29, including me. <laughs> and, okay, those, and I guess you probably do investigations to some degree yourself? Or I don't, I don't do know. investigations. Well, you're the executive director. I do, no, but I do, I do most of the training. Oh, I see. Okay. We train employers, housing providers, and anybody else who wants to be trained trained about the law so they understand and the public in general. I'll go out and I'll train <coughs> groups of individuals. Or you'll come on shows like this. I'll come on shows like this that says well, this is this is what you can do if you think you've been discriminated against or employer. These are the kinds of issues we are seeing where we have found issues with concern to Okay. Discrimination. I, I guess my question was with your staff and you talked mm -hmm. about how you can get up to 7,000 a year complaints and uh, if someone files one, is there a, and I know it depends on the complexity of the case, but from the point of when they file to when there's a resolution, is there a template for how long that might be? Uh, it, could it be six months? Um, I mean, in general, and I know yeah. you're going to say mm -hmm. it varies. Some maybe go on mm -hmm. years. Right. I don't know. Mm -hmm. in, in general. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But no, on average, we're doing cases in about 278 days, staff tells okay, me, which is under a year. That's, you know what, considering that's how much a, you get in your staff, that's pretty good. That's I think. an employee. Employment. then some of those obviously are longer so that's the sure. average uh, in housing we have a standard because we also have uh, have a have an agreement with the US Department of Housing and Urban Development's Fair Housing Unit Fair Housing Division to do cases and we have to 50% of them have to be done in 100 days or less you know, and that's a mandate less. under our under our agreement yes and we're somewhere at 36% right now we're not yeah. at 50% give me a sense then now um, what, what your sense of how things are going in Tennessee you say you get 7,000 complaints I think maybe you're getting more in some regard because of awareness and the, the mm -hmm. job you do educating mm -hmm. but I'm also wondering um, as you said over the past couple of years we've seen a spike maybe in certain types of discrimination mm -hmm. claims is it getting worse or better well there's there's this there's, there's this once upon a time it was bad <laughs> mm -hmm. and once upon a time it got a little bit better and we're somewhere now in the midst of what I call another uh, there are some places that are better and some places that are worse. And this has to do with companies, has to do with what companies are doing and how they are promoting internally their issue of inclusion and diversity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how they go about recruiting individuals and how they internally look at how they're doing. Well, how do companies tend to do that? I mean, I can speak from personal experience and like with mm -hmm. scripts here, I think they do a good job of, we have online, mm -hmm. um, you know, videos mm -hmm. to watch, tests, you know, everything about equality and mm -hmm. doing things right yeah. and fairly. And we have to take these tests and they do their due diligence to update us on the very latest. I think every, every couple of months I'm watching a new video and mm -hmm. taking a test yeah. to just be aware of what's out there. I think that's one thing companies and then they're hiring, mm -hmm. you know, and making sure you're fair with that. What else do companies or what aren't they doing that you think is a problem? Well, depending on the company and what they do, sometimes they don't do what Scripps is doing, meaning they don't have videos. They don't tell people what they should do or not do. And they have, as they say, the clubs, whatever mm -hmm. the clubs may be, and people are allowed to do and say whatever, hmm. whenever, wherever, to whomever. And a lot of times it's, oh, we were just joking around. Well, if you say it every day and you're just joking around and you talk about old black women, and I'm in the room, I might take offense oh, after I a while. <laughs> Listen, let's take a break on that note. Absolutely. And you know what? If I heard someone say that with you in the room, I would take offense mm -hmm. as well. And yeah. that's the way it all should be for us. It shouldn't mm -hmm. just be for the victim. I see that happening. It pisses me off. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. We'll be back with more of your calls in our final segment with our fine guest, Beverly Watts, right after this.